Yeah, you're on. Ready to take this. Book four. Okay, that was awesome. Give me your book. Yeah, that's right. Despite your shenanigans, uh, the ladies over here, right, they deserved it. Yesterday, we actually got through all the stuff. And it was like the first time or something. Did y'all go home and write Dear Diary? Today, we got through our last stuff. I <laughs> you should keep a diary oh, about your bad experience. Yes, yes, yes. That's funny. Someday it will help your therapist to have that background. This year is going to be on YouTube. Well, that's true. That's true, John. This year it's going to be so. When you're in your midlife crisis and you're on the therapist couch, just go back to the links of the videos for this class so your therapist can have some you know, back, back stories <laughs> yeah, and she can understand. Yeah. <laughs> no, he's going to have a chance. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be like he's trying to choose something. He's just going to be like, hopefully no one's going behind me with scissors. <laughs> <laughs> I want that one. <laughs> your case is PLSD, post-Latin stress disorder. Yeah, right? yes. uh, yeah. post-Perkin. Uh, <laughs> 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 right. <laughs> we got yesterday, found out that who had come down to Carthage? Mercury. Mercury. Uh, at whose command? Uh, Zeus. Zeus. Zeus or Jupiter. Uh, with what message? Go to Italy. Go to Italy. Get, get going. Uh, you know. And uh, if you are not moved by any sense of gloria, glory. Uh, in a sense of glory, in a sense of honor, then you know what? Respicate us, Scotty. Think about your son. Think about your son. Think about your son. Um, I am pleased to say that uh, as of lunch today, I finished reading and highlighting all the articles relevant to the coming oh, episode. Whoa. All of that last article I've typed up the notes from, so I'm going to finish typing up the notes tonight. Then, check on then no, I did, actually, I did. I even did one more check on that on Facebook. Uh, well, I was going to say, <laughs> now it's a matter of really taking all the notes and writing it up in a format to discuss issues with you and put it into an article. Um, but I think, I think one line, one line that I'm intending, I think will include in the article. I want to refer to the execrable version by Stanhurst. I just want to say that. I just want to put it in print. The execrable <laughs> version by Stanhurst. What, what does execrable uh, mean? Means horrible, just yeah. horrible, like cur accursed. Uh, literally, it is ex soccer. It's out of sacred things. It's, it's just a curse in terms of. And I just want to have a chance. It's like worthless. Like you know how like worthless means zero worth. I want it to be like negative. Negative worth. That's right. He actually owes us. Yeah, he owes us. He owes us money. We need to be able to sue the Stanahurst estate from 500 years ago and still get money because that's how bad it is. Yes. Well, okay. Speaking of like the whole like AP and like everything. Yeah. Yep. So like. spent all year long on sections of 1, 2, 4, and 6. Then some years ago they added sections of 10 and 12. And so for years we were doing 1, 2, 4, 6, 10, and 12. Well, there sections thereof and everything in English. And now that they've added Caesar, they've gone back and cut off 10 and 12 again. And they've kind of reconfigured some of the stuff in 1, 2, 4, and 6. Why that is, I don't know. Um, the only response I got from somebody who might know was, nobody will know, and nobody will bother to answer that question. So. Okay. Like, you, like, if you're like really wanting to like learn about like, if the purpose is to like know about the culture, just taking out and adding what you think is better in the show you do. But if they just wanted to add the passage about talent and like, that they're doing, because it would really represent the culture because they weren't a whole lot of people Unlike. Well, 
AP is geared toward a test. So they've got to set the passage so people have a fair shot. If they just said, hey, teachers, we're going to give a test on the Aeneid. Read what you want. Um, you know, some teachers read this, some teachers read that. Then the student has this test, and a kid who comes from a teacher who had actually read that very passage in class might have an advantage. And, you know, some people will complain that that wasn't fair. So because it's geared toward a test, they have to pick passages. And, and obviously, you, just, you couldn't. Even if you did this all year, you couldn't read the whole thing, at least in high school. Um, so, you know, we gotta, gotta pick and choose. And, and hopefully, here's, here's the hopefully the thing is, with all of this, you get a taste, hopefully you get uh, an interest kindled uh, or sparked, and then you come back, and even hopefully multiple times over your life. Back to it. Whether you major in classics or not, um, you know you come back to it. And we've said before, you know, you can't. There's an understanding you're going to get a 17. There's an understanding you would get a 37. There's an understanding you would get a 57 uh, from different life experiences. So you know, come back to it. You know, hopefully this gets a taste and an interest in it. Um, there you go. Okay. So he says, think back to your son. Tali kilenius ore locutus mortali suisus. Medio sermone reliquit, uh, pinging it up there in 276. Uh, let's do a little parsing here. What does Tali modify? Mm -hmm. It's a good question, isn't it? <laughs> Let I ask. More Tali. Good thinking, Minime. Mm -hmm. Ore. Good, Tali, Ore, because they're both ablatives. And the next line, what does Mortali modify? We suits, good, because they're both accusative plurals. There's that long is uh, accusative plural for an adjective there, okay? So make sure we know what's what. And Kilenius, we're getting a reference to Mercury, uh, not a patronymic here, but a reference to him via his geography. He is the Selenian, born on Mount Selenium, okay? Uh, so the Selenian, or Mercury if you prefer, Having locutus tali ore, having spoken with tali ore, was such, literally was, was such a mouth, but I think, Brenda, what you were saying was much better with what? With such words. Again, how many times have we had these, these transitions having to do with words? We've hit this and talked about it multiple times, you know. Uh, 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 Hike dicta, you know, uh, he's dictis, uh, you know, with these things having been said and blah, 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 with such a mouth, all right? So it's a variation on that same idea. Having spoken with such uh, a mouth or with such words, he mortalis visus medio sermone reliquit. Somebody get that for us, why don't you do it literally? Good. He left what? Mortal sight, good. Medio ceremony is all that you got left. In the middle of his speech, very nice. And that one, sometimes just fall back to your good old basic grammar, right? Mortalis goes with lesus, medio goes with ceremony. Accusative is the direct object of relief. He left what? He left mortal sight. When did he leave it? He left it in the middle of his speech. So here he was talking, uh, might have been seemingly like he was gonna say some more, and then he just, you know, up, up and away. Et procul in tenuex oculis et one with aurum. He left mortal sight and he what? He, he, he vanished, good, a one with. He vanished where and from what? He vanished into thin air. Isn't that interesting? Same exact metaphor that we use today. Now, some metaphors we don't use, right? We use some that they do. But there's one that's the exact same thing, the idea of thin air. He vanished into the thin air, far away, Procol. Uh, ex oculis. Out of sight. Out of sight, from the eyes. But where Aeneas aspect of mutuit ames, rectaicororum comae, walks about. 
Y ilibos haisen. That's how I translate it. But, but truly, Aeneas, all means of mutuate aspect to. <coughs> he what? Frenzy, right? There's all means. We didn't have that on a quiz or we had dead means or something. Right? It's the same thing. All means, dead means. It's not a present participle, it's just that regular adjective. Apart from his mind, away from his, out of his mind, he amutu it. He stood. He stood speechless. Right, see the word mute in there. He stood speechless at the aspectu, at the sight. Right, you would too. You would too. There you are. Well, okay, should be used to. It. Maybe that's a fair point. But there you are. You're decked out in what your your illegitimate lover spouse has given you as a gift. You are working on a little, you know, out garage building or a little, you know, storage shed out the back of the place. Uh, a deity materializes out of nowhere, tells you to stop fooling around and think you're boy, and then poof, takes a powder. What? You know, I think you'd be that way too. And his homai erecti. His hair erecti. His hair stood up because of the horone. Because of the shuddering, yes. Horror, the, the root of horror is the notion of bristling. We had it back when. Uh, Aeneas and the guys first, remember they, they, they found a little bay, it was with bristling shadow, horrenti umbra, right, same word. So his hair kind of stands up on end because of the horror, and his works, Falkibos Isit. His voice stuck in his throat. We would say in, in his throat, yeah, his voice stuck in his throat. He's yeah. got, there's just no words. There's no words to say to this. Well, the next thing, I agree. Okay? I don't know if you've had any kind of encounters with the supernatural or whatever. I mean, you know, yesterday was Halloween and all. But uh, I think if somebody came along and told you, you know, God Almighty has sent me to tell you, get up and go. Aeneas in the next line, he ordered a beer of fuga. Yeah, he's eager. He burns to depart. He burns to depart in fuga, in flight. Dude is eager to go, but don't miss this next adjective. Dulcis relinquora terras. He burns to relinquora. Leave these dulces terras. Sweet lands. The whole, and of course, this is the great, you know, emotional story of the whole business, made into an opera by uh, Purcell, Dido, and Aeneas. Uh, this is the great story. You know, is he uh, the callous cad, uh, sort of like, um, uh, who was Ariadne's guy? Um, Theseus. Remember the story of Ariadne and Theseus? Right. She, Theseus goes over to kill the Minotaur, she helps him, he takes her away, and then the next night, he, or the next day, he leaves her on the island of Noxos and sails away and leaves her alone. Um, and the guy yeah. Dionysus comes along and, and she says, what am I going to do? I can't go back home because I betrayed my father, King Minos, be, uh, telling about the Minotaur, and obviously uh, Theseus has left me and then he turns her into a constellation. Um, sort of a constellation constellation. <laughs> Ah. Uh, but anyhow, uh, Theseus is a cat, okay? He's, he's definitely the stereotypical cat, just leaves her. Uh, is that Aeneas? And uh, there's lots of indication that that's not the case. Uh, and here's your first one, perhaps. These are sweet lands. He's, he's enjoying uh, his time with Dido. He's enjoying this place. And, and I want to say, why would they? Okay, this is a guy who's looking to build a new settlement for his people, and here's one already half started. Just tag on, you know. I mean, it's easier, right? And his people have got a place to be. Atonitus tanto monit imperior 
quick de order. Now he does this, eager to leave, having been a tonitus. Thunderstruck. This is a standard word used of Jupiter. Jupiter is the thunderer. Okay, and there's various combination compounds of the verb. In Latin, he is the thunderer. He's the lightning bolt thrower, right? And so he literally, Aeneas has been thunderstruck. Right? He's been struck by Jupiter's words via Mercury. Thunderstruck by Tonto Monitu. By, by such a great uh, warning. Okay, it comes in the verb monio monera to warn. Do we know the word admonition? Yeah. Uh, That's a really good word. It's a little bit old, it feels, but a certainly good word. An admonition is very strong advice. Okay, so it's not just a casual, well, I think you could go to pizza because they got a bargain tonight, but you know, if you want Domino's, that's fine too. Uh, it's not that. It's your grandma, it's your grandpa, it's elder advice saying, you know, you really need to do X, Y. That's admonition. And so uh, it's an admonition. He's struck by this, such a great admonition, and let's face it, by the Imperio Deorum, the by the power of the gods as I think anybody would be, but especially this guy. Because what's this guy known for? His pietas, right, his loyalty. God's country, family. So, of course he's going to be struck by this. Who, says Virgil, alas, quid agas. What should he do? Quo nunc? Regina mambire furentem, audeat ad fatu. <laughs> With quo ad fatu. With what? Mm. With what speech? Uh, basically, what approach uh, should he audeat? Not audeat, not from audio audira. Should he dare to uh, <clears throat> ambira? go around the Forentum Regina. Around the queen. What kind of queen? Strong. Strong. Not strong. Fierce. Fierce. Furious. Furious in the sense of yeah. filled with the furies. Wild. Little touch crazy. Uh, <laughs> you know. Um, you know, it's, you know, you're three, three gallons of crazy in a two gallon cup. And I don't have time to clean up the mess. Uh, that's a little bit of Dido. Uh, she's already clearly a little bit around the bend regarding Aeneas. Now, he's got to know that. <laughs> right. Uh, obviously, that hasn't happened yet. You don't know what's going to happen. But but he already knows she's a Stop little spoiling. around. Stop spoiling. Stop. Uh, and so the question is, hey, got to go, got to go. Dido, got to gotta tell. How do I start that conversation? <laughs> you know, that's on Fatu. Let me speak to her. You don't. Says Cooper. That's it. Too bad that uh, uh, Paul Simon wasn't around to give advice to Aeneas. Please, somebody get the reference. Paul Simon. Yep. Rachel? 50 Ways to Leave Your Lover. Paul Simon. Slip out the back check. Make a new plan stand. Don't need to be coy, Roy. Hop on the bus, Gus. Don't need to discuss much. Just drop off the key, Lee, and get yourself free. Uh, however, Paul Simon wasn't around then, and so Aeneas had to, you know, how shall we say it, man up and, and confront this, right? Man up. Okay? No, listen, that back door man stuff, right? Slipping out the back and that kind of stuff. What? You gonna have the relationship? You gonna have the relationship? You gotta do the right thing, you know? Jack Cooper, did he? Cooper, you're not buying that at all, right? No, I'm not buying to that philosophy. Uh, okay, well, there you go. It's Cooper Pell. Okay. You're idealist. You're idealist, that's right. <laughs> Quite prima exordia summa. What? What? Prima exordia. What first? Yeah, first beginnings, right? And obviously that's a redundancy, right? What first beginnings should he sum up? Should he choose, right? Uh, I mean, he literally doesn't know what is the very first thing. A lot of times we'll use it, we'll say very first. Isn't that redundant? 
Yeah, only one first. Emphasis. But we'll, yeah, we'll emphasize that too, you know, to try to really get on there. He's like, I don't even know how to begin. A quantum of nunc hook kellerem nunc divided illuc impartisque rapit varias per quomnia versa. And now he divided his animum hook. He divides, he divides his, his kellerem mind. <coughs> his quick mind, he, and we'll talk about what that means. He divides his quick mind hook. Now he divides his quick mind iluk. Back and forth, basically, hither and thither. Hook is to here, iluk is to there. And it's a, I think it's a totally appropriate to refer to his quick mind. Why? It's not that he's really great at math. Not quick mind in that regard. Uh, oh, he's quick to change his mind. He's quick to yeah, his thoughts are all over the place. That's what it is. That's what it is. Like a rabbit. Yeah, yeah, it's it's it's, it's all over the place. Yeah. He's a rabbit. He's a rabbit. <laughs> <laughs> Did you ask me that question? I, was I did. Yes. On. Well, yeah, but you referenced Aeneas as a rabbit. <laughs> yeah, like like in Watership Down. Oh, in Watership Down. Okay, I, you know. Like Aeneas. a white rabbit. That's what he is. Okay. There it's it. Okay, you just say that next time. What well, was no, that? Well, 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 is a rabbit. Okay, have you ever thought about like what things like rabbits think about? It's like eat, poop, run. It's what like quick it? little thoughts. I'm not sure that how it distinguishes a rabbit from most of a rabbit's animal brethren. Okay, no. He Don't most animals character. think about those things? Yeah, like rabbits are really fast about things. Sort so gazelles. <laughs> but rabbits fight and water ship down. So it's oh, okay. Right. So we're really just coming back to water ship down. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so which is, so I totally sure. promote it as a book. It's my okay. favorite book. It's so good. It's okay to say rabbit. <laughs> 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 They're not going to let you off. Okay. It's so good. Okay. That won't make it past the day. <laughs> I know you were having your own little We're talking finger. about getting Cooper out of this room. Wow, okay. <laughs> so he divides his mind now here, now there. Hey, wait, speaking of that, can I go to the bathroom? <laughs> Please. Please. Thank you. <laughs> and in partis warios rap it. And he rap it. Wow. No, no, no. Rap it or rap it. He seizes. His mind, he basically takes his mind into warios partes. Various parts? Into various parts, and he wears sat per omnia. And he turns per omnia through all, through all things. He's running through every possible option. Two lines to say the exact same thing three ways. <laughs> now that's not Virgil just trying to you know make word count for the publisher. Uh, I'm sure it's, it's just it's what showing his indecisiveness. It really is showing his indecisiveness. I'm thinking about this. I'm thinking about that. He's going in different places, and now he's worrying about all things. And yes. Can I leave? Are you done? Yes. You are. Yeah, you're great. We're just uh, yeah, bring it up here. Okay. Or give it to Sam. I don't care. Uh, what good for you. Whatever you do, just don't give it to Mickey. Okay. Oh, God. Give that to Mickey. I mean, that would be, you know. That would be the end of All right, Wallet. Maybe you would eat it. Hype alternanti potio sententio visas. I did not. Finally, hype sententio. This, what, this feeling, this opinion, this idea. And you got to understand this. Remember this from Cicero, maybe. A uh, sententia is a formal pronouncement of the Senate. Not as much like a decree, but, but a formal statement of the Senate. So as they're talking about taxes or going to war or whatever, a senator might stand up and deliver a sententium. Okay, so for a Roman hearing this, they're realizing, okay, he has come to a real decision. Okay, because he uses the word sententia. He says, this sententia, at last, it we saw est potior. Looked better. Looked better. Basically seemed more, more potus. Seemed more, seemed more powerful. It had, it had more power to it uh, than, than anything alternanti. Than any alternative. Than any alternative. Um, actually, I'm sorry. I, I take that as a dated part. So this, this idea that he comes up seems better to one who is alternanti. 
to one who is alternating, literally, to one who is alternating, going back and forth. He finally lights upon his idea. Menestia sergestumque vocat fortemque serestem classem optem taciti socios quad litera coga. Now, this line, line one or two eighty eight, is almost like Homer's wine dark sea. Any time Virgil wants to reference a bunch of his guys, it's always these guys: Menestheus. Sir Gestus and Brave Sir Restus. It's just kind of got a little rhythm to it, and they fill a line nicely. You know, they, these three names fill an examiner line nicely, and he always uses these guys as the examiner. So what does what does Aldeus do? He woke up his three buds. He says, "Hey, Menestius, Sir Gestus, and you, Brave Sir Restus, Clausum obtent tacity." He calls them, and we might have wanted an ut here. So that they, being talkative, so that they being silent, may optempt the clausum. Opto optare. We do get the word apt from this in English. Uh, close. If something is apt for the situation, Sounds it's fitting. Probably. Right. And so really the base meaning of optimal is to fit out or to, uh, to, to set up the... Uh, so he calls these guys so that they may fit out the clausum, the fleet. All right, because nobody's been paying attention to the fleet for a while. It's been dried up. Everybody else, and presumably the guys have been, you know, enjoying life there in Carthage. What is dried up? I got to interrupt, but like... I, I actually totally pulled up on onto the beach. I, I mean, I don't know if they were dry docked or not, but, but the idea of that is literally pulled up onto um, dry land, so the boat is not in the water at all. You can dock a boat in the water, and so it's ready to go okay. again. And then sometimes people will dry dock it, so they say, you know, I'm not going to be taken out for many months, and okay. so I'm just going to put it in Are storage. Are they like, typically like, unhealthy at all? What's that? Are they typically unhealthy? They, I, I have a way of going with this, but it's just who the Trojans? Are dry docks like an unhealthy place to be? I don't know why. Right, okay, the reason I'm asking, um, like that term came up. Uh, there's again, it kind of like the games. It's called Civilization Four. It's mm -hmm. a very important game. You'd like it. Okay. You would um, love it for anyway. Isn't that where your brother plays? Uh, I play the Age of Empires. Okay, <laughs> sorry. So okay. Sorry. Okay. Sorry. You can build this thing called the Dry Dock, and I've always seen that like. It's a dry dock, so you mentioned it. I was wondering, oh. and if you build a dry dock, it improves production, but also you get like an unhealthy little symbol, which means like you try to like for your city to balance health and unhealthy and like happiness and stuff, and so you get like an unhealthy point for it. Huh. Like, I wonder why. I don't know any particular reason why. Probably because maybe it's not unhealthy, but maybe it's just dangerous because you have to be able to push stuff back into the water, and that will okay. take manpower, well, and there'll be work. danger. Yeah, it's yeah. certainly more work than to relaunch a boat. All right, yeah, Definitely. that's right. Yeah. Okay, so you dry docking is just pretty really hard in um, depending on how, like if like do like you get it in a certain position so that when you go out right. the water will pick you up and do most of the work for you and if you don't then you just like That may be it. Alright, cool. More more yeah. illness per se. Anyhow, he says, Hey guys, <laughs> get the ships ready. But do it <laughs> on the hush up. And, and he calls them to get us so that they may cogunt the socios ad litera. Bring all the comrades to the shore. And so that they may arm a parent. Prepare their arms. Prepare arms, prepare weapons, and so that they may dissimulant quae rego sit caus in the one. This isn't very nice. There's no, there, I can't, I can't spin this one for him. So that they may dissimulate, conceal, hide, pretend, cover up, deceive. What is the causa for these no wandis rebus? For these new things. Okay, let's break some stuff down. Optent, cogunt, parent, and dissimulant are all the same tense and mood. Anybody want to guess? Optent, cogunt, parent, dissimulant. Tense? Yep, subjunctive. With the A, 
Present. Good. They're all present subjunctives. Okay. It explains why he has called them together. He calls these guys so that they may A, B, C, and D. Now, what tempts in the mood is sit in the middle of 290. Sit. Oh, is that, is that like future purpose? It is not. Well, you've had it back in second year, and every you know, year since every year since then. Student helper boy not in this class. It's the same. It's the same. It's also a present subjunctive. But I thought sit was like, I thought it was supposed to be the, 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 the no, sit's the done. Done. It's a, well, it's, it's by itself here, though it's not with the fourth part oh, of the verb. Okay. Sit is the present subjunctive of what? Okay. Sum. Now here's the thing. The other four present subjunctives are parallel in that they follow woka. He calls these guys together so they may do blank, 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 and blank. The sin, however, is present subjunctive for a different reason. Anybody want to identify what? Indirect question, Danielle. Very good. Quae sit calsa. What is the cause? Someone may come along and say, hey, guys, what you doing? You've been kind of enjoying the life here in Carthage, uh, going fishing, boys. What are you doing? Yeah, and uh, Aeneas tells him to lie about it. He tells him to lie about it. Just got to cover up the cause. What's that gone? What, what is, what's that, like, why is he gone fishing for him? Because they go fishing instead of doing their work. Yeah, certainly. I think it dates back to, well, I think a little bit more of a rural time in our our culture, you know, where people might go off in the middle of the day, particularly kids, but, uh, you know, go off in the middle of the day, blow off their chores and go fishing uh, or swim or something like that. And then that phrase is just stuck. Uh, uh, very Tom Sawyer. Yeah, very much Tom Sawyer. Who is my idol? Yeah. Really? <laughs> that makes sense. Favorite book and my idol. It One totally day. makes sense. Suddenly <laughs> oh I just saw you as you I, are Tom that's Sawyer. That's perfect. It, it like, really I is. I love you so much. Oh so my wow. goodness. Christian. <laughs> I mean, that's just like I really. Love I love you for being Tom Sawyer. You are Tom Sawyer. Thank you. Thank you. Say centaria. Quando vedido nescia. Et tantos rupi non sterren amores. Temptatura ditus et quae molissima fandi tempora. Quis vebus dexter. Modus. Uh, in the meantime, centaria. Uh, since optimidito, yeah, excellent dido. I will say this: I, I, I like how Virgil treats his own characters. He doesn't. He's not all one-sided. He doesn't. You know, he brings a realistic picture, and he's, he's pretty good to the dido character. I mean, yeah, I mean, he's going to have her kill herself, but uh, <laughs> yeah. you know, he references her as optima here. And while Aeneas is doing what's right by the gods, that you can't deny. There's there's some shady feelings there when he tells his men to lie about it. And on the heels of that, you get Optima. You know, so he's, he's not going to just throw Dido under the bus as a character here. Since she, uh, Neskia, she doesn't know. And non spera. Wait, I'm Yes. Um, is Neskia, is that subjunctive? It is a subjunctive, it's after quando. Quando is almost functioning like a coon. So you're going to translate it indicatively, like you would oh, in a coon uh, clause. So it does not know so yeah. Since she doesn't know, and, and, and certainly does not spare it, does not expect that tantos amores are being rumpy. That such a, such a great love is being rumpy, is being broken. He, and he is himself, uh, temptaturum aditus. He, I'm going to explain the grammar in just a minute. Uh, he attempts or tries an aditus, an approach. And the guys are down here at the beach, you're taking care of business while, while preparing to lie. Now Aeneas is going, okay. Dido's up there, and uh, <laughs> she's making a big cake for the one-year anniversary. I, I, I'm going to have to go talk to her. 
I got to try some approach. Um, he's got to try at least or figure out what is the <laughs> mollissima tempora. What is the most easy, <laughs> what is the easiest tempora? What's the easiest time of fondi, synonym for dikendi? The easiest time of speaking, right? So you don't want to approach her right when she just, you know, uh, burned herself on a curling iron because she's already upset. Wrong time, right? Don't, don't, don't approach her then. Wait uh, too late. And, and he's got to try to figure out what is the uh, <clears throat> dexter modus for these rabies. What is the right way? What's the right manner, the right method for such rabies? for such things, okay? Okay, now, let's back this all up. I'm gonna sketch some stuff out if we can, okay? <laughs> Everything is hanging off of Wokot. Interesting. Okay? He calls these guys to Optent, Kogot, Parent, and dissimilant. Okay? And this is really one sort of construction here. And he calls them to do X, Y, and Z. And then Virgil, so Virgil makes Wolcott go one way, and then he makes it go another way and introduce uh, an indirect statement. He calls his men to do this, and the, the idea is when you're calling, you're obviously talking to them, right? And so basically he is telling him, telling them that. So this Wokot is really introducing two totally different grammatical subordinate clauses or sets of clauses. You've got the subjunctive kind of stuff, and then you've got an indirect statement that he himself temptaturum implies.